All right, we'll, uh, we'll get started here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and welcome to uh, Leading Through Crisis, a webinar for uh, leaders in health. Uh, my name is Chris Downey and I'm uh, a member of the Brivia consulting team and we're excited, uh, excited to be here with you all uh, today. Um, I just wanted to, to first welcome you to, to this session. I'm gonna introduce Steve, our, our, our thought leader in just a few, few minutes here. Um, but I see a lot of familiar um, names uh, in our sign up uh, in our attendance list today. So many of you would have joined us uh, either on November 17th or November 19th for our uh, building resilience uh, during COVID. So we're welcoming you back. Uh, many of you we heard following up uh, from that uh, session wanted to hear more about how to, how to provide support and lead through this crisis in particular. So we figured it would be important to, to provide a, a pointed webinar uh, to expand on, on, on some of the things Steve had already shared with you uh, and, and, and help, you, help you directly. So we're excited to be here with you. We're here for 30 minutes today. Uh, so it's a fairly brief webinar. Uh, as always with Steve, it's gonna be interactive. He'll be asking for you to engage. So we're encouraging you to load up the chat with, with comments that you have throughout uh, and, and engage. Also, there's the Q&A and there'll be time throughout our our, our, our 30 minutes together for you to ask questions and, and ask whatever you want. We'll get through as many, as many of them as we can. If we can't get to your direct question, hopefully we can hit it at least thematically. I also wanted to let you know that we're recording this session uh, and that we will make this recording available to all of you. Um, and we'll also make it available to those that couldn't make it today. Um, so, you know, we realize life happens and uh, people might not be able to uh, log on. And we're going to encourage you when we do share the, uh, the link to the recording to actually share it with anyone that you feel can benefit uh, from, from this recording. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Steve DeGroote. Uh, Steve's a, a great friend of mine, uh, and he has committed his life to helping people move to better, not just at work, but also in life. And he's done this through his work as an associate professor, professor of human behavior theory, as a therapist, uh, as the founder of the Getting to Better Initiative, and now as one of our co-founders of Brivia Consulting. Steve is also, also an author of a book on engagement and optimal performance uh, called Responsive Leadership. Uh, and we're just very fortunate to have uh, Steve here with us to share his insights. Um, and so with that, I, without further ado, I'd like to All right. Hey, Chris, I, I, I hear that you're you're dropping off there. Uh, the connection might be uh, not the greatest. Uh, can you see me? Can you hear me? Everything good? We got you. All right. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. My name is Steve DeGroote, <clears throat> as Chris said, and this is Leading Through Crisis. We did the Beyond the Crisis last week and the week before for a couple of groups, and this is going to be diving into some specific techniques and strategies that you can use. I wanted to say thank you for being here. Uh, definitely uh, being leaders in health is, uh, or any human service sector is not easy right now. Uh, we had a lot, of, a lot of requests, as Chris was saying, for how, what's the best way to lead in, in a crisis situation? What's the best way to lead through this pandemic, which has turned into an even more prolonged and pervasive pandemic than, uh, than we've expected? I know there's some light at the end of the tunnel, but this is going to be with us for a while. So let's jump right in. I want you to be interactive, as Chris said. I want you to load the chat with comments. Uh, the Q&A with questions. We're going to stop it a couple times. What I'm going to do throughout this is, is I'm going to take you through um, a couple of reflections and one we do most common, but with a little bit of a twist today. Then we're going to introduce some of the three of the 10 dimensions for optimal functioning. And what do those mean for uh, humans out of crisis, during crisis and after crisis? We're going to talk a little bit about the, the COVID impact and kind of move right into some key strategies that we know are working. And, and most importantly, one of the, the strategies that more than a thousand leaders and employees through health have told us over the last month uh, across our country, uh, what's the number one thing that people need more than anything? I'm gonna get final out, uh, you know, get towards the end of the presentation to, to just kind of go over briefly one of the programs that we've developed that has been extremely uh, received positively. It's called Connecting in Crisis. I wanna take you through that. Uh, and Chris will tell you how you can uh, learn more about that as well at the end of the at the end of the session. So let's get into it, shall we? I want you to, and fill the chat as you connect with certain ingredients, I want you to think to your greatest leadership experience ever. So I want you to connect with, when did you have a leader, a manager, a director 
that that you felt the absolute best. So I want you to, to, to connect with that time, right? We're gonna, we're, if you've done this reflection with us before, we're gonna do a little bit of a twist right away to try to get to some of the things that were happening for you and what that means for your optimal functioning. So if you wanna load the chat, what were the, the ingredients when you think back to your greatest supervisor or your greatest manager? What, what were the ingredients of the qualities that made that leadership experience so great? I'm gonna check the chat and see if there's anything. So I see personal connection. Awesome, thank you, Tammy. So, so we've got people saying a, a two-way trust and respect. Awesome, okay, so there was a, a strong sense of trust and respect. Okay, uh, uh, respected your opinion, affirming, support, someone who really listened, okay? I see exclamation marks on not a micromanager, right? So we've got a few, a few things coming up here. Validation, awesome, thank you, Jill. Thank you, Bridget, thank you, Esther. Now, now we see a lot of that validation, affirmation. Okay, I want you to go back to that time and think about it. Most of you are experiencing uh, an experience. Some of you are smiling. I know I often smile when I go back to that, uh, to that moment. Hopefully you're living it now. So what's happening during that moment? This leads us into what I'm gonna talk about now comes from a very special project that we're doing calling the Getting to Better Blueprint. And if you stay in touch, we're going to, we're going to um, share that in 2020. And in the, in the blueprint, there's 10 dimensions of meaning and we're going to actually touch on three of them. If you were in the session last week or the week before, you heard about the core four. Today, we're not gonna talk about those. We're gonna talk mostly about what we call the three great states. So when you think back to your greatest leadership experience ever, right? So I want you to go there and you think about those qualities. Well, this is what our research is showing. Our research is showing that when people are experiencing these three great states, now you know what they are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain to them and then we're gonna talk about how you can activate them and operationalize them before, during a storm and most importantly after it as well. So these are called the three great states. They're known as safe, significant and situated. Now, safety, you know what about, you're, you're talking about it right now. I saw, I saw respect, I saw dignity, I saw validation. So safe is about physical, emotional, social, and mental safety. That's what it's about in the moment, right? Now, a lot of people are talking about psychological safety, but see, the three great states are more than that. The three great states also include feeling valued and having a sense of value or, or feeling valuable, okay? So this is critical because it's also about having a strong connection to a person, to the people on the team or to the, to the actual work itself. Well, situated, what does situated mean? Situated is, means you're focused, you have purpose, you're clear on your roles and your expectations and, and what your role is in that moment. Now, now, what's amazing about the three great states is that leaders with our behavior, we can create these in relationships. We can create the three great states in the work environment as well. Why is that important? Well. We have found in our research that when we are experiencing the three great states, safe, significant, and situated, we are not only feeling well, we're doing well, we're performing optimally, and we're functioning at our absolute best. Now, what's also important to know is when one or more of the three great states are compromised, right? And you know yourself, one of the most common ones is significant, when we're not feeling, when we're not feeling valued or valuable, right? It's not long when we, when we start to feel doubt set in and we start to question our own worth, our own contribution, that it starts to impact our focus. So situated gets compromised and it's not long before we feel unsafe, right? So the three great states are critical. And we're gonna show you how leaders can not only create these, but sustain and strengthen these just regularly, but also in a crisis, right? So what's really neat about this is many of you are already doing this. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So let me ask you about this. So most of you reflect on greatest leadership experiences in your career. Does it look different in a tough situation? So let me ask you, does great leadership look different in a tough situation? What are the qualities from your perspective? We've been in a tough situation. We've been in a pandemic for eight months now, nine months. What are some of the great leadership qualities that really are critical in those moments? So let me see it in the chat. What are the qualities that we need as people in a, a tough situation? So think back to a tough situation when you experience great leadership or think about over the pandemic. What have you, what have you, how have you behaved and how have you conducted yourself that's created, created great leadership in a tough situation? Clear communication. Okay, awesome. Compassion for the followers. Excellent. Availability, consistency, and predictability. Well, that's awesome, Pam. Pamela is the availability, consistent predictability. We'll talk about the importance of that. Empathy, humility. Thank you, Jeff. 
Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Kirsten. Right, a visible support leader, validation, keeping calm, confidence. Okay. So people are saying, some people are saying, yes, it is different in the moment, right? And, and what's interesting, what we're finding, and this is just a perspective, is that great leadership is important uh, before the pandemic. It's necessary in the pandemic, right? So we'll get to that. Thank you. A sense of humor, right? Well placed. Thank you, Deborah. Right? Calmness, Jaina. Awesome. So what's really critical, too, is back to this. What you're, what you're identifying, right? So we can go through these. We saw predictability right? Clarity, right? We see that that situatedness, right? When we're focused, the interesting thing about the brain, and we're going to talk a little about the program that we have called Connecting in Crisis, talks about we crave, our brain craves predictability, a sense of control and clarity, right? That's why situated, giving people goals is critical. Feeling valued, we saw that in the chat. In tough times, being connected couldn't be any more important. And a leader's role in doing that is absolutely critical. Keeping people safe. Well, how do you keep people safe in an unsafe situation? Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that, right? So the three great states of safe, significant, situated are critical before, mostly during, and after the storm. And what we're talking about this is is leaders can create this in our relationships with our people, right? We're gonna give you very specific, tangible things that you can do to create and sustain the three great states. Okay, so these are called conditions: safe, significant, situated. The great news for leaders, and this is, we're going to talk about the COVID's impact on people, is that we can actually be a cocoon within this storm, right? So in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, we're going to open it up to questions, right? I'm going to ask Chris if there's been any, if there's been any questions. But before we get to that, when you think about this three great states, right, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know, when you think about places where you are, where you, in your work and in your life, where you feel the safest, or where you feel the most valued, or where you're clear on your role. You also know where and when you don't feel those things, right? So we're just giving a name to something that you already know, okay? And as leaders, it's important to know that when we create the three great states, and we can do it, we can do it on a one-on-one, -on -one, right? Like if I'm talk, if, if, if I ask Jeff or Jaina or Kirsten, uh, you know, to, to come to a meeting, let's go backwards, right? Well, it's important that they know what the meeting's about what their role is, right? What the purpose is, the process, the payoff, what, what time we're meeting, how long it's going to be, like all those things, anything left out will be a lack of situatedness for them. Significant. Well, how can I do that? I can thank them before they get to the meeting on how much I value them. I can be specific on a specific significant part of the project and say, you know something, I really like having you around. This is great. You're on the team. Thank you so much for you, but thank you for your support. How do I keep them safe? Well, I make sure that I'm on time, I follow through, I treat them with respect and dignity, I ensure that they're involved, right? See, once I know these things, I can create the three great states in that interaction, no matter what's going on around us so that we can perform and function optimally. So I'm gonna open it up and ask Chris if there's any questions, because I know some of the questions are listed uh, in a webinar and ask if there's been any questions that, uh, that have come forward about the three great states or about great leadership. Yes, Steve, um, not, not to, to be expected, a question came up about maintaining, how do we maintain these three great states in our current, uh, current state, uh, okay. the, current, uh, the current situation? All right. in front of well, you. that's awesome because we're gonna totally get to that question. <laughs> we're gonna answer it uh, right on, right on in, in, about, uh, in about 11 minutes. So we've also got what's, what's neat is we've got some things in the chat as well. Is there any other questions other than that, Chris? That's all we've got right now. Okay, so again, perfect. As Steve is going through this, feel free to uh, put your questions in the, uh, yeah. in the Q and A yeah. section or in the chat as well. Yeah, and there's some great chat contributions. Uh, Calm has come up quite a bit. We've, from Jeff, we've got uh, uh, a need of clarity is actually heightened, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Well, and Jeanette is also saying that guidance, direction, support, and reassurance. Awesome. That's almost like a recipe, uh, Jeanette. Right? Guidance, direction, support, and reassurance. And we're going to actually talk about why those th three things are absolutely essential. Okay. So you've been living in this COVID, uh, COVID crisis. So don't, like, don't hesitate to keep filling the chat and asking some questions. So this is the dip in the presentation. Some of us have felt like that or are feeling like that person in the chair. The biggest thing that the, the COVID crisis has done is it compromised our three great states. As a matter of fact, it hasn't just compromised our three great states, it's actually obliterated our three great states. Right, right in March and April, right off the bat, there was a real fear. Our sense of safety, our health, our financial safety was compromised, right? 
our significance. How was that compromised? Well, the things that gave us value, you know, connecting with, with, with family regularly, connecting with colleagues, going into work, not going into work, like, right? The things that gave us a sense of significance were undermined and compromised almost immediately, right? How about our situatedness? Well, our routine, clarity, what's happening next, right? What, what happened was a great deal of fear set in, a great deal of anxiety set in, and more than ever, uncertainty set in, right? Now, one of the things is I, outside of a pandemic, I refer to uncertainty as one of the friendly faces of fear. In low doses, uncertainty isn't a big deal, right? But when it shows up with its friends, fear and anxiety and more uncertainty, it can be crippling, right? So, so what does this mean? Well, what, is, what does this mean for us? Well, our people need what they always need from us. As humans, fundamentally, we always need to feel safe, significant, and situated, right? When we're experiencing that, now, if you were in the last webinar or future webinars, we're gonna share the whole 10 dimensions, right? The three great states help us connect to our experience, what we need, what we value, what's important to us, right? We also talk about feeling regulated, right? So we need these things. Well, what, before we get into what's the leader's role, we've got to keep something really important in mind for all of us. You'll see that picture of the guy on the chair and the, the guy I showed in the, in the ocean uh, on that rock. Many of us are feeling and behaving in ways that are, people would say are not normal. I don't use that word very often. I put it in quotes, right? We're seeing behavior, we're seeing fighting, flighting, fleeing, floundering, irritability. We're seeing um, emotional sensitivity with people that are normally outgoing or withdrawn and people that are normally withdrawn are spinning out violently or spinning in silently. So it's important to let us all know and the people that we lead, especially that we're all having normal reactions to a very abnormal situation. This situation comes once in a, in a, in a hundred years. When we're working with our people, before we get into the actual strategies, it's critical that we don't ask what's wrong because once we say, well, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with him? Now, a lot of people are even doing this. What's wrong with me, right? There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with us, but we got to ask what's going on, right? Let's get behind that behavior. And I have, I work with some, we work with some physicians and some people in healthcare. And just the other day they said, oh, I just about freaked out on someone realized their irritation is probably because they're dysregulating because we're in a pandemic and they just calm down. Messages. Like, it's okay, you're okay, we're okay. Now, I want everybody to notice that there's some, there's some words that we intentionally left out in there. It's not saying it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. We are going to be okay. Now, it's, our, our perspective is it's important to take that out because we don't know for certain. Lots of people said we were gonna be okay in the second wave and some of us are sitting here going, you know, I'm not sure, right? So it's okay, you're okay, we're okay, is absolutely true, right? because we are, if we're standing there, we have a pulse, we're at work, we're in life, we're gonna be okay, okay? That will keep us regulated, right? So I'm gonna check out the chat and we're gonna come into, into, the, into the strategies right away. Awesome, we got some questions. What if the leader is in need of support? How can they gain their mental, emotional fortitude to support others? Well, that's a really great question, Esther, and this is gonna say this to, to, to people is, um, uh, we're gonna get to that, but we're also going to talk about Know where you find your three great states, okay? So, so if we start to use some of these dimensions to go, well, when I'm feeling the three great states, where do I feel them the most? So Esther, who are the people we call, who are your key relators and regulators, right? Who are the people that keep you safe, right? Connect with them, uh, right? Connect them with more often, but also find out what are the things that you need from your leader to feel safe, to feel significant, to feel situated, right? Those are some of the things that you can tune into and you can look for those and strengthen them, but you can also ask people for them and let them know how you're doing. Now, again, they were important before the pandemic, they're necessary now. We've even have some people say, well, it's kind of now it's, we're into this, right? So what's the leader's role? Well, the leader's role is to keep people safe, to keep them significant and to keep them situated. Now you'll hear these other three words, right? That we use quite often and you'll see them coming up and it's very closely aligned with what Jeff and with what Jeanette were saying is we also need connection. Number one, connection, clarity, and a sense of control. So you'll hear those words come up and they're all aligned to the three great states, okay? So let's get into some of the strategies. We talked about some of the strategies. Well, this came up, here it is. Here's, here's the big giveaway. The number one thing 
all health employees and managers say they need more than anything else, if it's one thing, most of you have already put it in the chat, is to lend them your calm. Staying calm, so this is the thing about negativity and stress. It's contagious. But here's the good news. Calm is also contagious. And the number one thing that leaders can do in a crisis situation is to lend the people that they're leading their calm, right? So stay calm yourself, right? Do what you need to do to be able to project an image of calmness and, and lend that to the people that you're with. You've been in situations where you've been unraveling or dysregulating, right? And somebody has put their hand on your shoulder, right? Or they've said something and immediately you calm down, right? And the opposite is true, right? Our spinning leads to more spinning, okay? Now think about this for a second too. Now, we do a lot of leadership development stuff and outside of a pre-pandemic, the leader has a significant impact on the experience of their people under normal circumstances. When you heighten everything else, you, intensi you intensify and potentiate our effect and our impact on our people. And that's why we believe calm is the number one thing that teams and individuals are saying they need more than anything. But let's add to that. So let's, let's go, let's start with significant, okay? What are some things we can do? Well, connect, 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 connect more than anything. And remember that, you know, people say, well, that's good because we've, in, we've, in, we've increased the frequency of our communications. That's not connection. Communication isn't necessarily connecting and connecting isn't connection. Connection is about validating and affirming and connecting on emotional, mental, social level. How are you doing as the first question before we get to business? How are things? Or sometimes we skip that. It is absolutely critical right now. Validating and affirming their experience, not judging it, knowing that it's okay. Ensuring that they feel valued and valuable as much as possible. Ensure that they know that they're making a difference. Ensure them that you valuable. Say thank you more often. Focus on what's going well versus not. This is huge. The brain is risk oriented, right? It picks up negativity sticks like Velcro and positivity slips like silk. And my friend, Dr. Jean says that all the time, right? So we got to purposely focus on the things that are going well so that we can tip that balance of that skewed, everything's wrong, nothing's going on, right? Key messages that connect. It's okay. You're okay. We're okay. And please note again that we're taking out the you're going to be, right? Situated. What are some things now, if, I, if I, people feel I'm going too fast, you're gonna get the recording, right? And we're gonna also follow up with, a, 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 with information on where you can get a lot more resources. Encourage a focus on the things within their control. Now, I think it was Jeff that said, clarity is, is needed more than ever, heightened in these moments, right? Absolutely. The brain requires predictability, all times, especially in a crisis. Be as clear and concise to the extent possible on everything. Now, this is important. Because we are in a pandemic and we've got lots of communications going out there, all the dot, dot, dots and the question marks are leaving people feeling more uncertain. So here's a tip that I'm giving a lot of leaders lately is when somebody comes to you for an answer, we, we owe it this to them all the time, but especially in a pandemic, we owe them one of two things. So if Jeanette comes to me for, with, with a question, I owe her the answer or the reason why I don't have the answer and when I'm gonna get it, right? So that we can give some sort of control and clarity. Bring employees in on planning and decision-making. Focus on the positive strengths and be optimistic. We've talked about that, right? I've been the strengths-based poster child for years, right? Control, right? When we create significant and situatedness, we actually give a sense of control. We create safety. We're able to stay calm. We've gotta live the guiding values to the extent possible and start every connection with how are you? Courage, right? To get out of this storm, to get through, to come out not just walking wounded, but running resilient. These are connected to the three great states. They're also connected to connection, clarity, and control. That what courage is and what our people need from us is to show vulnerability, a balance of vulnerability and optimism and action, right? It's okay to say, I'm scared too, Jeff. I'm scared, right? I, yeah, sometimes I don't know what to do, but you know something? And then we move into optimism. We balance it with optimism and a sense of control by acting, okay? 
So I just want to quickly say we're going to open it up to questions. We have a program that we've been running. It's a 90 minute program that that expands on all this stuff that we're talking about, but really gets into dozens of tools, strategies, neuroscience, right? It's an immediate leader support solution that we're finding is working really, really well across, uh, across a whole bunch of health and hospital sectors, right? It, this program, and Chris is gonna send you information on it. It's very short with massive impact, right? And it's a case for connecting in crisis. It gets into seven or eight of the actual dimensions for optimal functioning. It really dives into the impact of the behaviors we're experiencing and trying to understand that from a neuroscience and a behavior perspective, just so that we can respond and understand ours and other people's response to stress. Two of the big things that we expand upon are the leader's role, and we refer to it as relator and regulator, to connect, to clarify, and to get you know, connection, clarity, and a sense of control, right? We go over very specific strategies for leaders detailing how they can stay calm themselves and how we can get people to get to calm. And one of my favorite parts of the programs is it, it offers a step-by-step -step conversation guide for right in the belly of the beast. How do you in minutes communicate and connect in a way that gets people grounded and focused on what matters most? So I'm just gonna open it up to, to questions here. If there are any questions, I know we've got about six minutes left or so. Man, these half an hour uh, webinars uh, are really packed, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, very quick, Steve, no, no question. I uh, just wanted to, again, feel free to add in to the comments or into the uh, questions, uh, ask any questions you might have. Steve, just going back to, um, to uh, Esther actually brought this up earlier. You talked, what if the leader is in need of support? How can they gain the mental, emotional uh, fortitude to support others? And, and something else that, that Esther went on to share with us all here was that she completely agrees about the calm, even if we have to fake the calm, dysregulated yeah. inside, yeah. the other person does not know we are acting, the other person yeah. still benefits. Yeah. Uh, so I thought perhaps we could elaborate a little yeah. bit more on what, what we as leaders can do to keep ourselves regulated. Yeah. So we can yeah. See yeah, well, great questions. And they combine a couple of my responses. So it's almost like you've answered your own question, Nestor, but I want to add to it. And thank you for that. Thank everybody for the comments as well. Whether we fake calm, but Let's not be, uh, let's not lie to ourselves. There's times where I am totally freaking out inside, but on the outside, I know I've got to stay calm for my people. And I think that's what you're getting at, Esther. A, a great way that we've seen leaders and we're helping leaders to stay calm is first is find your regulators and your relators, like find out who they are in your environment and connect to them. Also ask yourself, what do I need? What do I need as a leader in that moment to provide my team with support? What do I value most, right? So, Connecting with the core four that we talked about in the last, in the last uh, session will help you get an understanding of what you need, what you value, and what you hope for so that you can start shoring up your own resources and strengthening your ability to stay calm. Communicate with each other. Esther, if you and I were on the floor together, or Jeff, or Jeanette, or, or uh, Daniel, and Danielle, it's important to talk to each other and say, hey, I'm, I'm doing awesome today, so you can lean on me, right? or I'm just off a bit, but don't worry about me. I'm just gonna be a little bit off a bit, or I need your support, Esther, right? Communicating to your relators and regulators will help you regulate as well, okay? Great Any answer. other? Yes, great answer, Steve. Uh, just a couple, of, so I'd like to get to these quickly because they're important. A uh, question came in, if your relationship with, this, with staff has been strained, how can you restart and try to create the three great states? Yes, uh, what a great question. Now it's always harder in a crisis, right? Like, so when we get out of this, can we all just remember how we could should have done that before the crisis hit? But great question. How do we do it? When we're strained, acknowledge it, right? And you don't have to just call it out, but say, hey, um, you know, I notice that things could be better with us. I sense it, right? How can I be better? How can we be better together? Now, I said it in the last webinar, three messages that leaders can give to their people all the time, gently with respect and with genuineness is, is one. I want your success and I want you to do well. So it used to be just your success, but in a pandemic, I want you to do well. Second message is I want to be a better leader, right? And I would like your help with that. Third message, I want us to work well together. When we can convey those three messages in our actions and in our statements and in our inactions, people start to trust us and they start to believe that we really want the best for them. So those are my suggestions off the top of my head. Uh, the connecting in crisis, <clears throat> yeah, and the connecting in crisis, which Chris will show you, uh, we detail that and give you the tools to do that as well. Great questions. Anything else? One last thing, Steve, for me to send us off here. 
Uh, and I think you've touched on already, how do great leaders balance lending calm and being vulnerable? Yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's a good one. Lending calm and being vulnerable, sometimes just letting people know around us that we're also a little bit scared and that's okay, can help keep us calm. Trying to hold back the fear takes a lot of energy and can lead to our own dysregulation. So starting is being, in, number one, being in tune with yourself, right? And trying not to lend somebody your calm when you're not calm. And that's, again, where you're working with your team comes in, being clear with somebody, right? So that you know what you're capable of giving, right? Some days we're on, we know it. But when we're not, check that as well, right? Go, uh, we always say, don't go in alone. If you, if you have doubt, right? Just you know, go in with someone else. So knowing yourself, knowing your relators, knowing what you have to give, and that balance is just a little bit, right? And that's why we had, if you go back to that slide, when you see the recording, vulnerability plus optimism. Okay, that's a balance for uh, lending their calm. So I'm gonna say, you know something, I'm a bit scared. Yeah, we've been through this though. We've, we've gotten through worse actually. Um, and, and we're gonna get through this. And how we're gonna do it, we move into action. So even for myself, think about that for a second. Calm is fully regulated. And what helps us stay regulated? I'm connecting with you. I'm connecting with what's important. We're validating the firm. We move into optimism, right? And we, we get clarity on what we're going to focus on and we move to action. That can help regulate us and keep us all calm. Excellent. So I'm going to pass it over to Chris because I know people have things to do. He's going to tell you where you can get more information. So thank you everybody um, so much for keeping us safe and working hard. Uh, I'm going to pass it back to Chris. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. And thank you for the questions. Thank you for your participation, everyone. This is fantastic. As I mentioned at the beginning, we will make the, uh, the recording of this available to you so you can watch us. This was a lot of information in a very condensed time. We'll make that available to you. We'll get into your hands. Along with that, I will also send you uh, an overview of uh, the Connecting Crisis uh, program that Steve was talking about as it's proven to be quite helpful. And I think above all, let us know what you want to hear more about. That's exactly what today was. There was some specific requests and we wanted to, to meet your needs. So feel free to reach out to us and let us know what you want to hear more about. But expect uh, an email from me shortly with, with the recording and the overview of the Connecting in Crisis. And thanks everyone again for attending and we'll, we'll be in touch with you all soon. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Be as well as you can. Take care.